It's Celebrity MasterChef. I'm hoping that this time I can kind of go all at it and give it everything. These celebrities are all passionate about food. If you let the nerves get the better of you, there's going to be mistakes, fingers are going to be lost. The knives are shown. We're looking for that exceptional cooking stuff. Someone who's more than just a good home cook. Someone with that extra something special. This is the calm before the storm. I imagine I will soon become... <gasps> Last time, these six celebrities didn't quite make the grade. But now they're back for one more shot at the MasterChef title. But who will really have the talent? To find out, they must survive three rigorous tests. First, they have to invent two dishes out of a mystery box of ingredients. That is coming in with the taste of lemon toilet cleaner. Then they have to survive the pressure of cooking for paying customers. Your calamity. And then wow the judges with their best two-course menu. I really love that. That is very unusual. But after all of that, only two of them can make it through to the quarterfinals. The first three celebrities now have to prove what they're made of. It's great to see the three of you back here because obviously you are here because you want to show us how much you've improved. 50 minutes, two good plates of food, guys. Off you go. The celebrities must create two exceptional dishes from ingredients which include smoked haddock, tomatoes, French bread, potatoes, meringue nests, red currants, risotto rice, butternut squash, and lemon thyme. Helen Lederer we know as a comedian and an actress. Last time she was here, she got herself knocked out because her food was not quite as good as some of the others. I think this has got the makings of a very good dish. I just think it, it, it's embryonic stage. I'm back because I have a score to settle. I feel I should have got through to the next round and it's still burning. It's a burning issue for me. Let's hope she's raised her game and she is now at the level that we would expect of a finalist. She can do it. She wasn't that far off before. This is good. This is really seriously good. That's lovely. Last time you were knocked out, yes. how did you feel? Oh, I was such a bad loser. I was so upset. I was furious with you both. Are you back for revenge? And I surprised myself how seriously I took it. Because I, I think I sort of arrived going, oh, it'd be a bit of a laugh. And then I realised, oh, my gosh, this is serious. So I, I kind of went on a bit of a journey. And I love cooking. But I'm glad to be back. You have had 15 minutes already. Marie Helvin, fascinating lady, one of the world's first supermodels. Marie Helvin knocked herself out last time because her food was slightly displaced. She was trying to put all the flavours she really liked to eat onto one plate. Um, and then my main course was a total disaster, and I've never made it again. I've got to say, goat's cheese into mashed potato <laughs> is simply wrong. I'm going to leave that. All right. OK? We need her to really simplify what it is she's trying to do. Marie, good to see you. Hi. Do you have a fairly good idea of why you were knocked out last time? Oh, gosh, yes. I was terrible. I didn't do a good job at all. So what are your two dishes today? I'm not too sure. Um, these are all wonderful ingredients today, but they're just stuff that I would never use, so I'm a little bit stuck. I just thought I'd boil some potatoes just in case. OK, Marie, you're going to have to make your mind up fairly fast, aren't you? Absolutely. You're halfway.
Tony Hadley, a great singer and a great entertainer, and he loves to make people smile. Last time he was knocked out because his food was just too complicated. Too many component parts. The problem we have is that we've got honey, mashed potatoes and cream, tomatoes and a strong oily mm. fish, and peas and mint. And even if I go through that as a list of ingredients, you're seeing yourself going, that's way too much. Lots of flavour, not very much refinement. It's whether he can make his food a little bit prettier, a little bit sexier. I think I've learnt a lot from the first time I was on, and the lads must have seen a, a glimmer of hope in me, I suppose. Brave enough to be back here. Is it brave? Is it stupid? What is it, Tony? Bit of both, actually. <laughs> I think at this moment in time. I'm just going to enjoy it. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, it's great fun. So, um, yeah, I'll give it a good go. Eight minutes. That's it. Time's up. For his first dish, singer Tony has made the classic tomato bruschetta. It's a very basic dish, but it's a good one. It's sweet and juicy with tomatoes. Oh, that garlic, Tony. It's good, isn't it? Oh, dear. You can't have big lumps of garlic. It's a sweet, ripe tomato sitting on top of some crusty bread, huge amounts of garlic, big grind of black pepper, so it's lovely and spicy. The flavours are absolutely right. I don't have an issue with that. I've got to say I expected a bit more. I kind of just decided to keep it really simple, maybe too simple. His second dish is smoked haddock with stir-fried ginger, spring onion and broccoli. The idea of the broccoli and the ginger and the spring onions is absolutely right with the soy sauce. That flavour of the Asia with the green vegetable is right. But it's got this sort of very, very salty fish and the rich saltiness of soy sauce. It's not the best thing in the world. You know that. I know that. Actress Helen is hoping to get off to a good start with smoked haddock, broccoli, butternut squash puree with cheese and tomato salsa. Whoa, up and down and round and round. It's a bit of a kaleidoscope of separate flavours that don't match. In saying that, I really like the flavours of each individual bit. Just sticking them together it does not make a plate of food. The cheesiness and sweetness of your butternut squash with your smoked fish actually is quite nice. But sitting alongside that is this very, very summery tomato and parsley. It's a little bit weird. Will the combination of Helen's meringue sandwich with cream and red currants and red currant fool fare better? Mmm, I really like that. That's got the sweetness and the sharpness of the red currant, but not so intense because it's in the cream. That would have been beautiful between those two meringues. I like the idea of it. I like the sort of marshmallow centre, I like the crunch around the outside. At least we've got some decent flavour in there. But it's about you concentrating and getting a dish which is coherent and has harmony. Despite her nerves, model Marie has made a potato frittata with tomatoes and peppers. That's very nice. Yeah, it's light at the bottom, it's well seasoned. I love the flavours of the tomatoes and the peppers coming out through that, giving that all that juice. They are the flavours of Spain in a Spanish dish. Well done. Thank you. I really like the flavours of the tomato and the peppers because they're sweet, they're tart. The potatoes need to be crispier so they've got some more texture. It's all a bit flabby. It's all a bit sort of soft. For her second dish, Marie has made a smoked haddock risotto with broccoli and thyme. Your rice is cooked very well indeed. Your broccoli's nicely cooked. The smoky fish and the creamy rice is fine. It's that thyme which is an unusual flavour. I like the idea of that rice, the broccoli and the smoked fish. That thyme, that really rich herb, is coming in with a sort of faint taste of lemon toilet cleaner. Oh. And that's washing your palate away completely. Lots more of this competition to come. Off you go. That's the worst.
worst thing I've ever cooked in my life. Celebrity Master Chef and our three are back for a second chance. We want to see how much they've improved from last year. Let's talk about Helen because her food looked as though she'd been up to a buffet table and she put on her plates the things that she liked. Puree and salsa doesn't quite work. The smoked haddock and the, and the pumpkin I thought was actually quite nice together. And then the dessert, the little red currant fool. If she had have put that fool inside those meringues, it would have been really lovely. I did probably uh, go a bit mad with all the things on the counter, but I thought my flavours were pretty good, actually. Marie cooked us two dishes, smoked haddock risotto and then her Spanish omelette or frittata. The frittata or the Spanish omelette, the potatoes need to be crispier because the flavours in there were good, it just needed some more texture. She then went and actually made a perfect risotto. Perfect. The rice was soft, it was creamy, and then for reasons best known only to her, she threw a load of lemon thyme in it at the end, which just made the whole sensation a bit... Ugh. That thyme that I put in, I put that in at the last minute. You know, big mistake, big mistake. Tony made us tomato bruschetta and then he followed that on with smoked fish and a broccoli, spring onion and ginger stir fry. He didn't really apply himself as far as cookery skill went. The tomato bruschetta, I think, is a good idea. But that had mistakes on it. Big lumps of garlic, burnt around the outside. There's got to be a bit of precision there. And then we had smoky fish served with Asian flavoured vegetables. Is not the way to go. I knew I was going wrong with the haddock and the stir-fry. Kind of let myself down a little bit, actually. Tomorrow, our celebrities get to go in a professional kitchen for the second time. They know what to expect, but of course, the heat, the toil and the pressure will sort the men from the boys, that's for sure. Working in the restaurant is what I enjoyed the most the last time I was on MasterChef. Um, it's exciting, it's a real adrenaline rush and um, I'm going to learn something new. The restaurant, that's a hard day. Yeah, you want to impress everybody. You don't want to look like a complete idiot. You don't want to get in a panic. I'm not good at surrendering to authority, but I accept that discipline is required. There's no room for flamboyancy, is there, in the ranks? It's early morning and the comeback celebrities arrive at St Pancras Grand, a modern British restaurant in the heart of St Pancras International Station. Tony and Helen have arrived for service, but unfortunately, Marie has woken up very ill and is too weak to continue. Good morning, guys. I'm Billy Reed. Oh, mate. Oh, yeah. You're a body short today. I understand one of your colleagues is ill. No, so yeah, Marie's not very well. It's going to be busy. It's going to be hot. So let's crack on. I'll show you. Marvellous. Right. Helen will be in charge of the grilled chicken breast with potato puree, mustard cream and watercress. It's like just before you go on stage, you just think, oh, why am I doing it? Why am I here? The presentation is crucial, so she needs to mark each piece of chicken in a crisscross pattern. All we're doing is marking it marking for it. effect and flavour. Up, down again. And then you put it in the oven. How long do we leave it? Eight minutes, ten minutes. How will we know eight minutes is gone? Tony will be responsible for the baked haddock with tomato and basil sauce, green vegetables and new potatoes. The tension is going to get really quite high when people start putting orders in. You're on your toes. After two hours of prep, lunchtime service begins. Two breasts of chicken for you, Helen. And away when ready. Rihanna Vaughan, guys. With the pressure on, can Helen master the detailed presentation? I know it's not right. I know I haven't done it right. Look at it. Now the lines are going across. So it goes, uh. That's what I thought I did. Whoever marked that must have been on. Yeah, well, that was me. Tony, that's you away. Three baked haddock. Let's have it. Yes, chef. You need your fish, your veg, your sauce. Let's go. Meanwhile, Tony's haddock orders are piling up. I've got three going at the moment. It's extremely hot, and you don't want to get it wrong. On the pass in two minutes, let's go! Yes! I need the potatoes, Tony. It's 
two lots of potato. Bob Tony, clients waiting me. Yep. Go. Helen, two more breasts of chicken. My, I can't find my tongs. So when I pick it up from there, I turn it that way. Oh, no, it it this up. way. Just watch that chicken that you're cooking, Helen. As soon as it's cooked, take it out. We're cool. Just be careful, Helen. Just be careful. Sorry. Keep your eye on that chicken. Can't do it. On order, guys. Again, two covers. I think somebody likes Helen. Oh, Can we no. have, please, one breast of chicken? On order and away, please. Three. How much longer have we got to go? What, of the service? Yeah. It's only just started. Can't do it. Helen is struggling to cope, but the restaurant is full and the orders keep coming in. One baked haddock again for you, Tony, and a breast of chicken. For you, Helen, get it on and away, please. Tony, two baked haddock, that's you. On order in the oven. How long two chicken breasts? Uh, five now, one. I, I can't... Uh, I, I completely need your help. I cannot cope. You've got one there cooked and you've got one in there yeah. and two's just come on order. You're right. in the clear. I just want this to be over. I'm hating it. I have no idea what's happening. Two baked tonic tomato sauce, Tony. That's you. While Helen is in meltdown, Tony is staying focused. Two minutes, two minutes. Two, yeah, two minutes, yeah. So it's been in two minutes. Great, chef. He's got it. Let's go. But after forgetting his potatoes earlier, can he get his plates up to standard? Beautiful. Let's go! I had oven baked haddock. It's very tasty. It's good. On the other side of the kitchen, Helen has persevered and is beginning to find her feet. Guys, I need two chicken away now, please, Helen. Great. Helen? Yep, I'm here, Chef. Thank you. I do the potato now. You go, my dear. See? You're on it. You know what you're doing. Just relax. Fantastic. Go on. You're doing well. Chicken's good. Mustard sauce on. Very, very nice. We might give you a reprieve. Service. I had the chicken with the mash, and it was really nice. In fact, it was quite... I'd have that again tomorrow. Guys, that's it. Service over. Last check's gone. Uh, well, done it. Done a grand job. <laughs> Thanks, Chef. Cheers. Tony did really well because he's calm. Even though it gets hot you, and you're going to get bothered and you're under pressure, he was definitely the calm of two. There was a couple of minor hoops to go through, but uh, I, didn't really, I, I don't think I did too bad. Helen got lost more than once. It's not a very difficult process if you follow what you're told. And I, th I definitely think she lost her way. I couldn't do it. And I didn't want anyone else to order any more chicken. I just thought, stop eating chicken, please. Choose, choose something for Tony. Now they're straight back to MasterChef HQ to show how their experience has improved their own cooking. I didn't function well under pressure. I know what I do, and I do it well, but it's kind of chaotic. I'm going to do everything I can in this round to try and impress. You, you want them to go, ooh, actually, I quite like that, so, uh, so I'm hoping they'll like it today. Welcome back. For the first time ever, due to illness of Marie, you have a 50-50 chance. This is your food. There's a quarter-final place up for grabs. I wish you luck. Let's cook. Yesterday, actress Helen put too many flavours on one plate. Can she get the combinations right today with her own two courses? Hi, Helen. How are you doing? <laughs> Very well. So what are your two dishes today? Salmon with some beans and a tomato -y, tabasco -y thing. Dessert is strawberries and Beaujolais. How much of your cooking is put it in and let's see what happens? Quite a lot of it. My strength is an instinct with um, the flavours that work together. Uh, and it can, on a good day, taste quite nice. Helen has got a lot of big flavours on her bench. She says she likes to throw it together and see what happens. Well, let's see what happens. 
Singer Tony was a hit in the restaurant, but he still needs to overcome yesterday's lumpy garlic bruschetta and his mismatched smoked haddock and Asian veg. Tony, today you're looking relaxed, at ease, and almost organised. <laughs> a lot more organised than I was yesterday, yeah. Tony, your two dishes today are... Garlic chicken and then sea bream, kind of pretty rustic, really, with capers, uh, pit of black olives, tomatoes thrown in. Rustic's good yeah. as long as it delivers on flavour. Will yeah. your food deliver? I've cooked it before, I like it. It is tasty, yeah. It seems to come out OK. Will you do me a big favour? Yeah. If you and I are going to remain friends, would you chop that garlic up into a smooth paste, please? We don't want great big lumps again, Tony. Oh, the only big lump we want oh, to see I'll on MasterChef is you. I'll crush it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Good luck. Thanks a lot. Cheers, guys. A whole baked sea bream with olives and tomatoes and capers. It sounds delicious. It's big, it's loud, but it's got to pack a punch. Just six minutes left. <laughs> That's it, time's up. Helen's hopes of a quarter-final place are pinned on spiced salmon with green beans in a Tabasco and tomato sauce, a cucumber and dill pickle, and sweet potatoes with onions. Followed by strawberries in Beaujolais with a lavender and orange-scented mascarpone. It's highly flavoured food. You get a little bit of sweetness, first of all, and then you get Tabasco chilli, and then you're getting coriander, and then you're getting lime juice, and then you're getting dill. It's not unpleasant. It's just so much. It's so busy. Your palate is full with different sensations. There's lots and lots of flavours going on, and some of them are working together, some of them are a little bit displaced. But I, the sensations are really, really exciting. Now, our dessert. I really love that. That is very unusual. It's delightful. It's sweet, it's lavender, it's perfumed, it's honeyed. The wine is just a little bit of sharpness. That is quite incredible flavour sensation. Wonderful flavour of the strawberry then that cream in there is almost like white chocolate scented with lavender. I really like it too. Tony has made garlic chicken on a bed of leaf salad and tomatoes, followed by baked sea bream with garlic spinach and potatoes with onions. You seriously like garlic. You, <laughs> you are a garlic monster. <laughs> And for me, that garlic is so powerful, it's starting to overpower the, the actual flavour of the chicken. Oh, really? The chicken's cooked really, really nicely. It's got that lovely crust on the outside, which is crispy. It's a very simple dish. That moist chicken is a, is a lovely partner to that sweet, <clears throat> intensified tomato. I love the heat of the chilli dip as well, and it's a beautiful match to that soft chicken. Thanks. Perfectly cooked fish, mate. Sour, sharp olives and rich, sweet tomatoes. Get rid of the garlic, Tony. You don't need it. Textures are all soft. They are all lovely. There is a sharpness that comes from those capers. Mm. There's a sweetness that comes from the tomatoes. But there is just a huge punch in the face <laughs> of garlic. I'm a garlic freak, and maybe I should just tone it down a little bit. Good effort. You've worked very hard. We have to decide between you. Off you go. We'll let you back in when we've made our decision. <sighs> At this stage, we usually have to debate three people, but Marie has gone home sick, so we are left to discuss Helen and Tony. Helen cooked for us spiced salmon with lots of other flavours. Sweet potato and onions, beans with Tabasco and tomato sauce, and then a dill pickle with lime and uh, cucumber. It was a bit confused. So you end up with lots of little treats on a plate that don't necessarily work together. Individually, they're all nice. You put them together and it's, it's too busy. 
Then we go on to the dessert. Wow, that was a heady delight. That dessert absolutely worked. It was that lavender and orange blossom in the cream and then the lightness but slight acidity of that wine and the sweetness of the strawberries. I really enjoyed that. It was very unusual. So it's a 50-50 now with lovely Tony. I know Tony's very, very good. Anyone's game, as they say. Tony made us chicken soaked with the ginger on a salad with the tomatoes. The tomatoes and the chicken went fairly well together. There's so much garlic in that food, it's hard to actually taste the chicken. I enjoyed Tony's chicken. It was soft on the inside and it had a crisp coating on the outside. And with the chilli sauce dips he had there, I thought it was a lovely dish. But then I go to his main course. The fish was cooked beautifully. That whole sea bream with the flavours of olives, capers and tomatoes was great. That's how he loves to cook. Big flavours, big presentation. It works when you take a whole fish. It's his infuriating use of so much garlic. Hey, listen, if I can go through to the next round, dream up another couple of super duper recipes, calm it down on the garlic. Yeah, Bob could be your living uncle. We've got Helen, who's very, very experimental, and every so often she pulls off a very good dish. Do we take that risk? Or do we go with Tony, who actually puts so many big flavours on a plate that they sometimes overpower everything? We have made our decision. The person going through the next round is Tony. Congratulations. Hey. Wow, well well, live to fight another day. I'm really pleased for Tony, seriously, seriously. I was a bad loser last time. I am um, a genuinely gracious loser this time. Yeah, a little bit surprised, but very happy. Ah, it's good. Fantastic. Yeah, I've got an idea about what I'm going to cook next, actually. And it involves only a tiny bit of garlic. There's got to be some garlic somewhere. Tony will be back for the quarterfinal. But up next, three new comeback celebrities battle to join him. I'm definitely back to try and win it this time. Otherwise, I wouldn't have bothered coming back. So, we'll see. My fighting spirit's back. <laughs> Yeah, there's going to be pressure because everybody now knows what they've got to do. So we're supposed to know our onions. I assume there will be onions. I'm going to take that pressure and I'm going to use it. I'm going to stay focused, but at the same time, I'm increasingly nervous. It's time for you to show us how much you've changed and how good you've really got. Two plates of food, you've got 50 minutes. Let's cook. The celebrities must cook two exceptional dishes from any of the ingredients, which include tiger prawns, pasta, spring onions, Swiss chard, cherry tomatoes, chili, puff pastry, black cherries and white wine. These celebrities have had a go at MasterChef already. They went out of the competition because they made silly mistakes. There is no room for error this time. Martin Hancock has fantastic ideas. He has a real eclectic style of cookery. I came back because last time I kind of let myself down a little bit. It's the skill that lets him down. He even forgot to boil the water with the spaghetti last time. How basic is that? The pasta is not cooked enough. It's disaster. <laughs> it it's absolute disaster. Has the guy been cooking enough and really got some skill in his back pocket to come in here and show us what sort of cook he has become? I wanted to have another go. Now I'm here, I'm beginning to question my judgment. Martin, nice to have you back in. You seem fairly settled and you look like you've got a plan on what's going to happen. 
Yeah, so I think um, last time, I mean, nerves just completely overtook me, so just trying to chill out a bit more this time. Why are you back here, Martin, really? It was just so embarrassing last time to forget to boil my pasta. I wanted to prove to you that I can boil water. You've had 15 minutes. This might be more nervous, like. Claire Richards, we know from Steps. Timing was a real issue for her last time. She set herself a huge amount of tasks and couldn't quite complete the dishes. Not very happy, are we? No. What's the matter? I didn't get it all on. I think she really let herself down last time. And I hope this time she gives herself a chance to really reach her full potential. Because there was a great cooking, Claire. This time, I definitely want to impress and, you know, I wouldn't be here if I didn't want to win. So I think that's got to be the ultimate goal. Claire, great to have you back. Thanks. We know that you um, went out in the last round because you just kept on making silly little mistakes. I know. I know what to expect this time, so I'm not as nervous and I'm trying to be a bit more confident in my own cooking ability. I feel like a new person. I'm a completely different person. I didn't come back just to see how far I could get. This time I came back to try and win it. You've got ten minutes left, that's all. Roland Rivron last time was pipped at the post and made it to a quarter-final but didn't quite make it into the semis. I don't think I uh, excelled as best I could last time I was here. I feel I can do better. So, yes, I've come back with a more scientific brain. I hope Roland Rivron's been practising because some of his food was slightly wild. You don't need all this stuff on the outside. I don't know when to stop. It's like, oh, look, oh, look, I found this. Boom, put that in, and then it just becomes this big sort of goo. He can be good, he's got to be focused, and he's got to understand what it is he's cooking before he starts to cook it. I'd love to win it, obviously, but I, I, I don't know if I've got the culinary chops. Roland, you look yeah. like you're well on the way. Yeah. To a coronary. Yes, that's right. Wait until I open the cream. <sighs> I'm not, this is not my forte, this round. It's got to be said. Has your food changed very much? Well, I like to think I've become less slapdash. But unfortunately, this isn't a good example. <laughs> I'm in that slight sort of panic zone where I'm just going to chuck it all in. You have just five minutes left. Only two minutes left! Time's up. Thank God for that. Actor Martin wants to prove he's moved beyond raw pasta with a bruschetta with tomatoes, mozzarella and basil. There is a richness of, of sweet tomato and uh, huge amounts of garlic, the crunch of the bread. It's tasty. It's just... Second time around, I would have thought maybe would have just got something a little bit more elaborate. It's tried and tested over millennia. It tastes lovely, and it's a safe option. Could have been more adventurous, but I know from bitter experience that that can sometimes lead to disaster. Can his prawns on a bed of Swiss chard with potatoes and an aioli sauce make a better impression? Aioli is very rich and thick. Yeah. What we've got is eggy, milky, garlicky, saucy stuff, which I'm, I'm not actually going to eat. No. The depth of those salty prawns against the ironness of that Swiss chard works really, really well. Prawns are cooked really nicely, and I think that fishy, juicy meatiness with the chard, I think, is lovely. It is showing a decent palate. Despite his flustered start, comedian Roland has made bruschetta with mozzarella, cherry tomatoes and basil. Milky mozzarella, a little bit of sweet tomato, a little bit of metallic basil, but you've burnt the edge of your bread. I panicked with the, this round. 
You gotta get a grip. Yeah. Rubbery mozzarella, burnt bread, no seasoning. It's about as bad as it gets. Good. Will his prawns served with onions and fried pasta fare better? Tell me why you fried the pasta. Because it looked like it was too soft and I thought I could maybe just sort of firm it up a bit. Almost dry it out, but no. That's, there's no science involved there, is there? No. Prawns are right, that's giving sweet flesh. But there are other flavours that are hard to discern because a lot of them are burnt. But you eventually get some ginger, yeah. you eventually get some chilli, and they are nice flavours to have with the prawn. OK. There are mistakes aplenty. Yeah. Fried noodles, burnt bits all the way through it. You can't be happy about today, can you, Roll? No. No, not happy at all. Singer Claire's first dish is chilli prawns served with Swiss chard, onions, tomato and chilli. I like your little Swiss chard and tomato mixture, which has, you know, got lots and lots of chilli in it and it's very, very tasty, but it's overpowering the actual prawn. It's all right. I like the sweetness of the prawn, but there's something very acidic in there. Oh, uh, yeah, I put white wine in. I think the wine was a big mistake. For her second dish, Claire's made a cherry pie served with cream. I like the fact you put all that sugar on top of the pastry, but it would have been great to have some custard or something inside that pastry to keep it lovely and moist. But at this stage of the game, I think it's OK. They're good flavour combinations, it's just not wet enough. But I've got to say, I, I think it's pretty decent. There's plenty of competition left. Off you go. <laughs> ah! It doesn't get any easier, does it? Mystery ingredients, invention test, not bad. Well, obviously, Roland needs to pull his socks up. He got himself in a right tiz. Cheese and tomato on toast with basil can be a wonderful thing, but we had burnt bread, we had no seasoning. As for the prawns and the noodles, I think the concept was really good. Unfortunately, burnt bits of it and he fried the pasta. It all got a bit sad and burnt, basically. Burnt is the word today. Burnt. Ronan burnt Riveron. Claire, the cherry pie, it looked the business, but it needed to be more syrupy inside. Those prawns on top of the Swiss chard tomatoes and chilli looked very, very nice. It was a good-looking dish, but I couldn't taste the prawn. I've seen them cooked in that kind of garlic chilli oil before. I didn't realise that it wouldn't get through to the meat, so... But now I do. <laughs> I thought, even though Martin's food was rather straightforward, he got lots of flavour. What he called the bruschetta was perfectly seasoned. It tasted great. I really enjoyed the flavour, but I would have liked to have seen a bit more skill. I think the lads were right. I was probably a little under-ambitious, but um, I wanted to get things right rather than make a complete hash of things. But I still managed that with my A early. Brilliant. Martin's idea for his main course was fantastic, but... We end up with sort of a, a garlicky, eggy sauce. He's just got to stop those little mistakes. Well, they've got the pro restaurant coming up next. They've been there before. They know how hard it is. I am a bit nervous about the professional kitchen. I'm fully expecting to be thrown right into the deep end. I am a little bit nervous. You can't help but be focused in that situation, so I'm going to have to listen closely and just do exactly what they say. Professional kitchen. You're going to be part of that. You're going to be a cog in that, in that wheel. Oh, it's, a bit, it's a bit daunting, but it's kind of fun. It's early morning and Claire, Roland and Martin arrive at Goodman Steakhouse in London's Mayfair. They'll be cooking for the lunchtime service under head chef John Cadieu. We've got a very, very busy lunch today. We have high expectations from our customers to serve a good food, so let's get to it. 
Martin will be cooking fish cakes with wilted greens and a white wine foam. You just got to concentrate, don't panic, and it, it, it will end. <laughs> Roland will be responsible for lemon and thyme chicken on mash with green beans. Nice and easy. We're not doing rocket science. We're not doing foams. We're not doing mousses. We're not doing jellies. Right. So let's get to it. All right. I've never ever done this before, so this really is a first for me. <gasps> oh my god! And Claire is cooking steak with a garlic and herb butter, chips and a side salad. Each steak must weigh exactly 225 grams. Well, that's 231. Yep. So you're six grams off right there. <gasps> 224 grams. That's not bad, that's is it? That's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. Keep it up. It's 12 o'clock and lunchtime service begins. Check on four fish cake. Yes, chef. Chef. Thank you. Lunch is on, people. With four starters on the go, Martin needs to get his timings exactly right. How long, Martin? Uh, about five minutes. Five minutes for fish cakes. Those fish cakes will be charcoal in five minutes, yeah? First course sets the stage for the whole lunch. First taste, first appearance, right? right. Make sure it looks good, yeah? Try and keep the sauce on the plate, yeah? Just on the side of the salad, yep. so it doesn't wilt the salad, yeah? So it! I don't fall, but I mean, it's early doors yet, isn't it? It's gonna get busier. Yeah. Check on one chicken. Okay, chef. Thank you. Whoa! Roland's next to get an order, but he's a little too eager to impress. We haven't even called second course. We have to take a minute, right, and relax. Green beans are already done. Yeah. Let's take those off and start that again. Start that again. Thank you. When he said chicken, I thought, right, cook a chicken. But no, it, it meant that chicken's been ordered for their own their starters, obviously. Uh, so I launched in like a mad stick. How long for chicken? Ready, chef. This time he's on cue, but is it cooked to the restaurant standards? Roll in. Yeah. You're firing everything too fast, yeah? I know. We're not incinerating here, Roland. We're cooking it here, yeah? Sorry, chef. That's the last one we're going to serve like that, yeah? Yeah. Once I've done it three or four times, I might attempt it with one arm. <laughs> That's how confident I am. What am I saying? Who am I fooling? No one. Mains away on 34. Two steaks. Sorry, Claire. Oh, yes, chef. What? Yes, chef. I need to hear you, yeah? Yes, chef. Thank you. Claire's steaks must be cooked to each customer's exact order, so she needs to keep a close check on her timings. How long for two steaks? I don't know. How long? Check Six your steaks. Minutes. Come on, check your steaks, Claire. Come on. Customers are waiting, yeah? Let's take a look. Open it up. Pull it out. Close the oven. Fantastic. Oh, my God, that's so hot. Come on, let's go, let's go. Come on, come on, come on. People have an hour for lunch, right? Fantastic. That's a nice lunch. Nice piece of steak, crispy chips, like this every single time. Let's get it done. Have chip. <laughs> it's halfway through service. The restaurant is full, and all three celebrities have orders on. Check on. First course, two fish cakes. Martin now has to prove he can get his presentation right. Martin, come on, let's go. Let's go. Focus, focus, focus. Come on. Ooh. Take it easy, Martin. Relax. You drop another fish cake, I drop you, yeah? These are looking much better, yeah, Martin? That's perfect. There you go. Yes, chef. Meanwhile, Roland's drowning in chicken orders. Check on. Five chicken. Five? Because I'm doing five portions of beans, chef. Large pan? Yeah. That would be what we call in the business thinking. Dang! Check out one chicken. Now it's six chicken, one right away, yeah? Yes, chef. Two more chickens, straight up. That's eight all day, yeah? Oh. Where's the other? Great, thank you. He now has eight orders on the go. I can't remember what order they're in there. Relax, relax. Okay, right? oh. Roland, you're a calamity. Ah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of them. 
At least the food's hot, yeah? The food is come hot. On, come on, come on, come on. Don't talk. Service. Five steaks, two medium rare, two medium, one rare. Um, two minutes. Thank you. Claire's also under pressure at the grill. It's really hot, that thing, and I can't get the steaks to turn around. Thank you. Very nice. Oh. Good steaks, nice plates, OK? Good Thank job. Thank you. And with service drawing to a close, Claire's impressing the chef with her perfectly cooked steaks. Service! Thank you. Last table, come on, let's go. Go, 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 go. Service! Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's service. Thank you very much. Let's go. <laughs> Claire, she had a really tough job today. That grill is really, really hot. Her plates always look good. Nothing came back. She improved throughout the day, so not too bad at all. That was quite fun. That's the kind of food I would order and I would love to eat anyway, so I was quite happy. Roland seemed to have a, a couple of tough times there. He was a little bit all over the shop. <laughs> I wouldn't hire him tomorrow. When suddenly there was a five, a two, and a one, that's, uh, I'm never going to mention those words, those numbers in that order again, because that just sends a shiver. A five, a two, a one, no! Martin was pretty good. He had a couple of moments there, he needed to focus a little bit more. Ooh. But his uh, fish cakes, they weren't too bad at all. I'm really looking forward to this afternoon, because after a lunch service in a West End restaurant, you're pretty keyed up for your cooking. To be honest, I'd like to maybe put two of them together and take the best qualities of both of them, but. I think today's winner would be Claire. Now they're straight back to MasterChef HQ to show how their time in the restaurant has improved their own cooking. Unlike the mystery box, I know what I'm doing today, so I'm not going to be quite so uh, manic, I think. I hope. I pray. This is kind of a quiet for us still. Feeling quite nervous, but I've been feeling nervous the whole way through. I got up on stage in front of thousands of people and, uh, yes, I get nervous, but not like this. It's, like, majorly traumatic. Now, this is your food. One hour, two plates of food, one quarter-final place. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. Yesterday, Martin was criticised for playing it safe. Now he hopes to impress with a technically ambitious two-course menu. There's a lot of stuff here. I don't know what you're going to cook, but it's going to take a lot of time. I'm going to do a guinea fowl. I'm going to stuff it with uh, a walnut stuffing. Going to have a little Jerusalem artichokes on the side, a little bit of red wine reduction, some steps. Going to wrap it in cabbage. I've also seared up some lovely tuna with Nam Jim sorbet. Going to have it on a bed of beetroot and rocket um, with um, an absolutely gorgeous tahun. You've given yourself a huge amount of work to do, Martin. Yeah, well, you told me to up my game. Well, yes, we want you to up your game, but we want you to stay in the game. I mean, there is a real danger that you won't complete this. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. What Martin's attempting is a lot of work for three hours, let alone one. Ladies and gentlemen, you've had 20 minutes already. After frying his pasta and burning his bruschetta, can Roland impress with his darkened green peppercorn sauce, followed by a creme brulee? What do you think you have to show to us now? I'm hoping today I can, uh, I can achieve some burnt-free food. Last time you made it into a quarter-final. Yeah. So you've been there, you've hit the next stage. I oh, know. Today, can you hit the next stage? I'm coming up from behind, I think, but um, we shall see. If I can get the timings right with this stuff and none of it burns, then we're laughing. Duck, rosti and a pepper sauce. Sounds like a great idea. Love the sound of his menu. Can he keep it together? Only 20 minutes left. Better get a move on. After impressing in the pro kitchen, can Claire continue to shine with her own two courses? Claire, tell us what you're going to cook today. 
I'm cooking a Thai green chicken curry and a molten chocolate pudding. Mm. Claire, yesterday you seemed really comfortable. Yeah. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling like I'm going to have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> it's all gone out the window. I thought I had more time left. How much time do those puddings need to cook? Ten minutes. Ten. Mm. You are pushing it right to the wire, aren't you? Yeah. Claire's doing a Thai green chicken curry and a molten chocolate pudding. She's trying to get a quarter-final place. Is it exciting enough? You've got five minutes left. Seconds left. Time's up. Step away. Step away. Will Rowland's pan-fried duck in a green peppercorn sauce with potato rosti and garlic spinach, followed by a grape creme brulee with grated white chocolate, be mistake-free? That duck is lovely and it's pink and it's moist. Unfortunately, the, the, the flavours I get are quite sweet and very, very acidic. It's that sauce. It's not quite right. No? Not for me. The duck's cooked really nicely, crispy outside, lovely soft meat, but I'm left with this taste of acidic peppercorns, and what I really want to taste is that duck. Mm. Right. Pudding. That is just gigantic. And you've gone completely berserk with the white chocolate, Roland. Yeah. Actually, it's very nice. Really? It is very nice. And you get that caramel top, it's thick and creamy, and then you get the natural juice of grape, washing it all away. It tastes very good, Roland. <laughs> well, if it tastes nice, surely you've, you've got a result. You, you have got a result. Right. It is tasty because it's uncomplicated. It delivers on flavour. It does what it's supposed to do. Claire's first course is Thai green chicken curry and coconut rice, followed by a chocolate fondant with cream. I think the, the chicken's lovely and soft. I think the flavour in your coconut rice is very, very good. I think your sauce is all right. I feel it doesn't have enough depth. I think that's rather yummy. Really? Oh, I think that's rather good. Citrus, liminess, and then chilli, chilli heat, and the flavour's got more and more powerful. I think that's yummy. From Thai curry to chocolate pudding. The crunch and the clean flavour of that rich cocoa on the outside and that wonderful texture of that sponge, I think is lovely. I think it's OK. I like the texture. I like the flavour. I like the hint of booze. Mm. It's decent mm. and it doesn't set me on fire. I've done my absolute best and I think it looks nice. Does nice make a MasterChef champion? No. What makes a MasterChef champion? Amazing. Martin's first course is seared tuna with a Nam Jim sorbet and a cress and beetroot salad, followed by guinea fowl with a walnut stuffing, cabbage, mushrooms, artichokes and a red wine reduction. I love the flavours of that wonderful, rich, meaty tuna with that sharp lime juice and the punch of chilli. The flavours, I think, are really well done. Thank you. 
I think your flavour combinations are, are lovely, and it's very different. That's really, really good. Cheers. Thanks. Move from our tuna to our guinea fowl. The predominant flavour is that black cabbage with the garlic in it. Underneath all that, I can't get the taste of guinea fowl. You've tried too hard and you've got far too many ingredients. It's just too much. The textures and the cooking is perfect. But there is so much going on. I'm scared to try and list the ingredients. I thought I'll try and really show that I can put a lot of things on a plate. Um, because I want to get through. And I think oh yeah, I probably went a little bit too far. We have to work out who's going to be our quarterfinalist. Off you go. Ah! <laughs> oh my god! Ah! Celebrity Master Chef continues to get tougher and tougher. And if we consider the difference between yesterday and today, it is quite extraordinary. Roland had a huge amount of work to do after yesterday's burnt fiasco. And, of course, let's not forget the shocker of the pro kitchen. And he came in here, I think, with great ambition. The idea of doing a duck breast, green peppercorn sauce. I think a lot of the things on the plate were cooked really well. But the flavour of that sauce was, was not good and it was very acidic and it was a real shame. I'm proud of what I've done. Whether it's enough is a different uh, uh, metre completely. Then we had a gigantic brulee affair. Johnny had about half a kilo of pudding on there. What does he think we are? We're talking about MasterChef here. I think Roland goes home and we discuss the merits of Claire and Martin. Martin's an interesting guy. I absolutely loved that tuna dish. It was citrusy, there was real spice in there, yet it still maintained the sweetness of the tuna. What a brilliant idea, a great dish, interesting, full of flavour. But then we took complex cooking to ridiculous lengths and we had a guinea fowl with bacon, two types of cabbage. It just went on and on and on. Is Martin a genius in the making or are his inventive dishes just going to get wilder and wilder? I think I should have done maybe less, but I did promise the boys that I was going to pull out all the stops for the, uh, the final round. Claire did, I think, a phenomenally good Thai green curry. I thought it was lovely. The chicken was cooked very, very well. Lots of vegetables running through it. But it needed that heat of spice with the sweetness of the coconut milk. Chocolate pudding, I love the crust around the outside and that cream sitting on top. It was a decent chocolate pudding, but it just didn't excite. You, know, you want a bit more than decent if you really want to propel yourself through this competition. Yeah, I am disappointed. They didn't kind of go, wow, that was amazing. I mean, is it enough to do two all right dishes or is it better to do one that's not so great and one that's, you know, fantastic? I, I don't really know. Decision time, Mr Wallace. Who's it going to be? Our winner. Our quarter-finalist. It's Claire. I'm really scared now. <laughs> yeah, a bit gutted, of course, yeah, because I wanted to progress. I went for broke and it broke. I realised pretty much with the mystery box that I was going to have to fight to survive. Obviously, I'm going to tell my kids I won. That's a given. It's a mixture of happiness, excitement and panic. <laughs> now I've got through again, I need to go through to the semi-final. It's going to be really tough, so I've really got to up my game a little bit. Oh, God. Claire will join Tony for the quarter-final, where they'll battle against two other comeback celebrity chefs.